recommend it. Why are we talking about last year's fringe? Because it's here this year. Oh, go see Pulse. There we go. <laughs> Got a woman playing the violin. <laughs> Boom. Cool. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Adventurers Wanted. So, what are we doing? What's going on here? This is a tabletop role-playing game, hence the tables. Uh, these lovely people to my left and right will be playing characters in a story that we are telling together, and I will play the rest of the universe, the rest of the world, so I will control monsters they fight, weather patterns they encounter, ships mostly, a lot of ships. It's a ship-based thing, so there'll be lots and lots of ships. So, what's happened to date? Um, well, there's 150 hours of backstory. <laughs> I'm not gonna try and cover all of that, because that would be insane. But um, if you want to have a look online on YouTube or Twitch, there are videos of what we've done to date so far. These people are all members of the crew of the Spirit of the Horizon, which is a naval research vessel. It got sent to a mystical, magical new world when they read a spell off a tablet, which took them far, far away in a way they hadn't imagined possible. They were trying to escape a god that was trying to kill them. Now they are trying to get home and they seem to have discovered more pieces of a similar tablet on this world and are trying to collect those in the process as well. Last night, uh, the entire ship was attacked by a gigantic snake aspect of a god, which nearly destroyed it, but they managed to fight it off in the end, but the ship is in serious disrepair and is currently being towed by a pair of friendly sphinx, which are lions with wings, to a nearby town that is going to help them, apparently. Note the use of the word, apparently. <laughs> right, let's kick off. Let's start by going around the table. Everyone introduce your character, who you are, what you've been up to on the ship so far. And let's take it from there. Lou. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm quite new to the crew. Um, I'm Zach, halfling rogue, and I'm the uh, acquisition officer. The acquisition? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like requisitions officer, but uh, <laughs> more of a fight in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what that means now. <laughs> cool. So you're the local person who nicks all the stuff. Great. Lovely. <laughs> like it. <laughs> Catriona. Um, I'm Kat. I'm playing Scarlet, who is a tiefling paladin, who is the ship's chaplain. Uh, I'm Chloe. I'm playing Relora, who is the ship's commander, until recently was uh, a giant octopus that was holding the ship together with all of its tentacles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the commander acquitted herself in battle yesterday valiantly by holding the ship together as it fell apart all around them. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, guys. The ship is looking pretty awful. At this point, it is being held together by all of the wizards in the crew casting spells to try and keep it in one piece. Mostly the cantrip mending seems to be the only one that actually fixes things. Cantrip is a very low-level spell that people can cast from memory. Um, so they are trying to hold it together. A sphinx is currently towing the ship. The keel's been snapped. So it's really looking in very, very bad shape as the, as the this sphinx drags the ship towards a distant island. What are you guys doing while this is happening? The battle was pretty intense. The entire top deck of the ship has been torn off. There's a hole in the side and the keel's been snapped. The mast is still completely whole and standing, but uh, there's a lot of wreckage, a lot of carnage. 70 lives were definitely lost and at least double that were injured. How's everyone doing this morning? What are they up to? If the ship's still in such a bad way, mm -hmm. I'm assuming at the end of every hour, Relora is just casting Polymorph again <laughs> and becoming a giant octopus again. To you don't need to do that anymore to hold it in place. That's, okay. that's fine. But in that case, uh, she probably goes and talks to the captain because he seems noticeably absent during the, the combat. Okay. And she's trying to figure out exactly yeah, where the captain's head's cabin at. during this entire horrific event. Untouched. Completely untouched. Strange, that. OK. 
Okay. Do you want to talk to the captain? Knock on the door? Sure, sure. I, I knock on the door. What? It's Rolora. Door opens. Uh, Chansey 2. Door opens. It has a password. Uh, he's inside, as is his gigantic pet griffin that you think probably couldn't fit through the door now. A griffin is a lion with the body of... Uh, it's a body of a lion, head of an eagle, and it has wings. He has a pet one. It's now bigger than his room, and yet it's in his room. Captain, I am... Um I wanted to ask how you are. Fine, fine. Everything's fine. The ship's fine. <laughs> Is there anything I can do? Do you need to talk at all about an anything, Captain? At this point in time, I really just need to make sure that we get to the wherever we're going in one piece and that we, we don't die, that we don't all horribly die. At this point, I'm pretty sure we're all going to horribly die. She, she actually just leaves without saying anything mm -hmm. because he's never spoken like this before. Yeah, his stress is really kicking in now. He, yeah, he's never been this open about falling apart, basically. He's been falling apart for a while. The well, original yeah, captain of the ship died when they first got here, so, yeah, he's... Yeah, and actually, she actually just... She can't quite deal with him being like this right now, so mm -hmm. she actually just leaves, even as if it's quite rude. As you leave the cabin, the... Uh, male sphinx, slightly larger, is still sat on deck. He's not pulling at the moment. Turns to you and says, I think he'll be all right. It was pretty epic. With all respect, you don't know him. True. Someone said you were looking for pieces of a tablet. Yeah. Do you know where some are? I might. What are you guys up to? Um, <coughs> I will probably be scuttling around trying to uh, deal with the people who have been injured, mm. um, patching them up. Mm -hmm. um, Describe what you look like. So I have um, nice shiny big horns, which I didn't bring with me today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tail. Um, She's probably still wearing her clank, so she's got um, she's got chainmail and probably pauldrons and a nice bit of plate. Uh, so a gigantic priest is currently ching, 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 going around yeah. trying to help people all <laughs> over the ship I with with devilish horns. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. There are a lot of injured people. They're looking worse for wear, but hopeful. They managed to defeat something that they didn't think they'd be able to. Also, something similar to what sent them here in the first place. So there is a general sense of worry, but also a sense of accomplishment, which is really nice. Do you think you're adding to the accomplishment or to the worry? Um, I'd like to think that I was adding to the accomplishment. Mm -hmm. um, How so? Well, I, I imagine that I probably took part in the fight and took some things to pieces. Mm -hmm. um, with the healing things, I'm probably going to be doing it in order of rank. So the most uh -huh. important people first. Okay. Um, working my way down, mm -hmm. making people feel good about the world, mm -hmm. and that we're not all dead. Not all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a chaplain to me. Yeah. Excellent. Go on then. What's happening in the meantime? Uh, What's your character called? Zach. Zach. Thank you. What's Zach doing in the meantime? Zach is probably raiding the lower levels <laughs> to get bits of barrel, bits of anything which can be, you know empty barrels and such like to help start patching up the ship, mm -hmm. redistributing things, just generally trying to help get this ship back into sailing order because until it is, there's nothing he can really do. It's true. How light-fingeredly? Uh, start off with not... <laughs> <laughs> so you're just doing your job. That's all you're doing right now. Currently, Just yeah. doing your job. Nothing too serious, nothing too stressful. That's good. The ship looks like it's in decent nick. The spells are working. It's definitely just about floating. There are definitely holes in it, and it's being bailed all the time oh. by the military on board, but it's not going to sink any further, and it is slowly cresting towards an island the lookout can see in the middle distance. Um, can everyone make perception checks for me, please? Let's see who sees the island first. 19. 19. 6. 6. 9. 9. It's her. <laughs> <laughs> Before you, you see a chain of islands. They are a number of tall spires. 
jut out of the sea. They look like teeth. They look like teeth just jaggedly jumping out of the sea in a very spiky, needle-like way. Um, there's a bunch of larger islands with spires of rock, some of which clearly have the top sort of slightly shaved off by wind and shear over time, so they are habitable, and they certainly seem to be, you can see buildings. They look like, again, spire-like buildings. Obviously, people that live there have taken some influence from the land around them. There is a glint of gold from one of the buildings as you get closer. Right. You have a question? Your eyes seem questioning. No, no, I was just thinking. <laughs> just thinking. So there's vegetation. Um, it's very much salty sea spray. It looks like very much an ocean community by any other way. As you get closer and the Sphinx starts pulling you in, the larger Sphinx who you were talking to, who's still next to you, turns to you, reaches his hand into his own chest. It's magical. There's very clearly something weird going on yeah. as, it <laughs> as it goes into his own chest. And he pulls out a piece of the tablet and says, I think you need this, and hands it over. I take it. Mm -hmm. um, I say, thank you. How? How? I'm sorry, I don't understand. We Sphinx are guardians of the mystical. We travel the world looking for things that need saving, things that need looking after. You are trying to get home, is that right? Yes. Maybe this will help you get home faster. Thank you. As, as guardians, you don't know where any other pieces are, do you? We have heard rumours. And those are? When you are, when you are done, when you are ready, seek out the island of Coralia. There is a sunken temple there. As we understand it, there is a piece hidden there for you. Hidden by who? These are very, very powerful artifacts. Whichever race discovered them at any given time has used them in a number of different ways. That one was being used by the Nith, the snake people from the last adventure, to try and commune with their god, which they seem to achieve. Do take good care of it. Of course. Thank you. I go directly to the captain's quarters. Mm -hmm. I knock again. Because I don't know the password. Yes. Chance you to. Uh, he opens the door. I hand it to him and I walk away. I don't say anything to him. Uh, uh, what? Good, I guess. <laughs> what? Yeah. The Sphinx at this point starts stretching out, claps its wings and says, I don't know if we will meet again, but you are valiant, you are brave, and do not be disheartened. This universe is full of dangerous things, and you are clearly protectors of it. With that, he flaps his wings, flies up, and as the ship is pulled in towards a definite harbor dock area, um, he flies up, helps his partner sever the rope, and the ship sort of crests in and <laughs> lands, <laughs> thumps into the dock with a low, dull thud. Um, yeah, they're gone. They fly away. Can everyone roll perception checks again for me, please? <laughs> Non-natural 20. Non 20. 17. 14. 14. As you look in the water around you, there are bodies in the water. Do you know what a katatu is? No. no. They're a race that live on this world that you will have seen in the past through various NPCs. Uh, they are purple-skinned. They are relatively tall and large. Their faces are quite troll-like from standard D&D if it helps you. Yeah. Um, their skin's quite leathery. Uh, they're known to be relatively hardy and resilient, but also um, quite isolationist. There aren't a huge number of them around. But there are Katatu bodies in the water. You see about 20. Hmm. Meanwhile, your role was next highest. On the dock, there is a large group of Katatu standing and people are being helped out, the naked Katatu are being helped out of the water at this point in time, being given a loincloth to wear, which wraps around the middle and hangs down to the ground with a sword emblazoned on it. So are they being helped out by other Katatu? Yes, yeah. all Katatu here. And do the bodies in the water look like they're dead, or are they 
Yes, they are most definitely dead. They are slowly drifting out to sea, um, but there is very clearly a lot of dead. There's no injuries to them as far as you can tell. Okay. I mean, Robert, want a medicine check for me? You as a chaplain? Thank you. Yeah. Um, they appear to have drowned. Okay. Hmm. Um, bits of wood are strapped together, presumably by yourself advising, to uh, mm -hmm. create a gangway down onto the dock. Um, as you make your way down to the dock, you are greeted by these Qatar. They don't seem that surprised or shocked to see you. You get the sense they were given some kind of warning. <laughs> and um, you are led down to where a group of them are standing at the front. I presume the three of you are in the vanguard mm -hmm. going forward. Yep, yep. Oh, okay, excellent. Uh, a woman comes up and says, who's in charge? I suppose I am. My name is Rolora. Elahan. Reaches a hand out okay. flat. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with how best to greet. She flips her hand over and flips it back again. Strange foreigners, that will do. <laughs> <coughs> come, with, come with me, please. We are pleased to see you. And she turns, and the katafu on the dock starts slowly <coughs> clapping as you guys <laughs> walk down the front. It is cheerful. They are genuinely happy to see you. You think they might be sort of absent-minded or in the middle of something else, but they're yeah. genuinely pleased to see I do, you. I do flash some looks to Scarlett and Zach in a kind of... Uh, and I, I, I message them uh -huh. psychically, just going, do you know why they're clapping? <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> See if just to be aware as well, Zach. Like, you're about like on par in height. You're a bit shorter. You are three foot tall. <laughs> These gigantic things are going all over you, just leaning, looming over you as you go. <coughs> and it's certainly a bit odd. You're being led by this woman who you tried to shake hands with and failed. Um... <laughs> There is another slightly larger male next to her who is more purpley than blue, who looks incredibly strong, like <laughs> hench as all heck. And next to them is another one who looks a bit sickly, quite, quite hunched over. Not old, mm -hmm. if anything younger than these two, but definitely looks like a um, slightly weaker form. I mean, I don't really understand why at the moment. But roll a medicine check again, Chaplain, if it's your area of expertise. Eight. No, she looks a bit ill. Um, right. oh, okay. As you make your way through, they, you see that there are some dwellings at the end of the dock, and these are sort of barrow-style dwellings, so they are very much underground. Um, there is a raised mound over them of earth and wood to hold them up, but they are very much in the ground and deeper in. So as you make your way in, uh, these three come with you, join you in a barrow, and the others seem to fade away as you walk in. The woman turns around and addresses all of you and says, I am Elahan. I'm known as the wave speaker. I'm the high priestess of Katuraba. We owe you a great debt. Your ship ended the, f the first battle of a war that we were fighting on an island called Rawstool. Can you all roll history checks, please? Eight. 18. 18. 19. 19. Zach, you remember people talking about this. This happened about 100 hours ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you were, there was a battle on an island um, that seems to be, have a continuous battle around it, and the crew managed to um, win the battle for ne either, neither side by completing the terrible task in the middle of the temple, which was to stop this war happening. This was a war fostered by magical intent around the island, and both sides think of you as heroes. Clearly more so than you thought, but because uh, <laughs> the message has gotten back. But yeah, these guys are, are very much indebted to you and the work that you've done, and they are very, very pleased to see you there. Uh, the large man, so his name is Mongwao, and um, he appears to be very much in charge. Elahan is the high priestess, but he seems to be in charge of the people. And uh, the sickly woman introduces herself as Heshan, the wave rider. Her hair is hanging lamp and lank and damp against her face. Her complexion is very sickly. There's definitely something wrong with her. She calls herself a returned when she's talking. Uh, can you guys roll charisma checks generally to see how well you are engaging with these people, what we get from them? 13. 13. Eight. Oh, I just didn't roll one. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled a 
which he gets to re-roll because he's a halfling. Uh, that was an eight, yeah. What was yours? It was also an eight. Yeah, you guys are very nervous around these big guys, so you don't really know what to, what to do, really, but they're engaging with you perfectly well. Okay. Uh, Elahan says to you, it feels churlish to ask again for help, but these are not our normal surroundings. We have a gigantic, beautiful temple on the top of the island, but at the moment, we can't access it, so we are, we are stuck down here. Um, we would be indebted if you could provide us with some assistance. Assistance in getting to the temple, that's all you need. Um, do you want, we can get to the temple, it's just that we... Um, let me explain. Katiraba is the god of the storm, and we worship the god of the storm in our way. You saw the bodies in the harbour, yes? Yes. Uh, as a coming-of-age ritual, we take to the water and must return from the water during a storm. If we do not, then uh, our, bod our minds, our bodies have been taken by Katiraba and become saints and holy people of, of, our, of, our, of our people. Some even return later, and she looks at Heshan. We do not interfere with the sea, with the storm. We do not, if we deem it completely incorrect and wrong. However, the storm has taken over our temple. We have no way of stopping it. We have heard of ways in the past of stopping this without destroying it, but we sim I personally cannot get there on my own. I need assistance to take me there and help me make my way to the storm and to tame it. If you would be of assistance, I would be indebted to you. So you want to fight a storm? <laughs> do, please, please do not fight the storm. I cannot stress this enough. We, do not want, we are not enemies of the storm in any way, shape, or form. It is our God. We just need help containing it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, the, uh, the returned Heshan speaks up and says, please understand, we have no interest in harming the creature that inhabits the temple. We simply want it to work with us, to guide us, not destroy. And at the moment, it is destroying. When you say creature? It is an embodiment of the storm. It is an embodiment of our God. It stands over the temple and, and makes it uninhabitable. You must have seen the state of our ship when we docked here. Um, the, big, the big one who's in charge of them and goes, yes. <laughs> It looks awful. <laughs> if we were to help you in this, are you able to give us the resources and aid that we need to rebuild our ship? It would be an honor to allow your ship to continue. It would be an honor to become part of the legend of the spirit of the horizon. And he makes a symbol on his chest. Like these guys have taken you guys into their religion in a kind of way. Like, they, they are very much obsessed with you. You are heroes to them in every way, shape, or form. Um, says, we can absolutely complete it. Can you tell me the extent of the damage? I don't know if it's possible for me to state how damaged our ship is. What, is, what, is, what are the conditions of the, the braces, the hold, the it, keel, it almost the needs. It almost needs entirely rebuilding. The tiller is smashed, the keel is broken. It's barely a ship. <laughs> he leans across to Alahan and puts a hand on her shoulder and says, we are getting a chance to rebuild the holy ship. She nods and goes, yes. <laughs> yes, we are. And they're clearly really happy about this. <laughs> like you guys have given them, like you've given them something by asking them to help you rebuild the ship. Roll um, insight oh, checks, please. Oh, are we going to accidentally kill their god? <laughs> oh! Critical success. Critical success. 14. 14. 11. 11. <laughs> so you guys are still a bit freaked out by these big dudes, and they're clearly <laughs> weird religious stuff. Um, yeah, they 
they've not just made you part of their religion, they are, they think that you are saints, much like the people who return as saints, they clearly have a deification process as part of their religion. And doing this for you would be an honor. It's all good, there is no deception, there is no terrible side to this, they, they are just so happy to help. In that case, it seems we have an agreement. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else we should know about the creature in the temple and how you wish for it to be treated? With respect, um, it will try to kill you <laughs> because that's what it does. It is a storm and the storm is violent. But it is also of great wisdom and kindness and intelligence. We must simply contain what is there. The process for containing has not been attempted in over 20 years. And the details are in the library, but the library is in the temple. So at this point in time, we are going to need to find out what to do and then do it. I'm, I'm sure it won't be astronomically difficult, but um, I will require all of you to respect the storm. Agreed. Brought persuasion checks. None of you look convinced about respecting the yeah, storm. Yeah, <laughs> really not. <laughs> Rolled a four, but that's a 16. <laughs> <laughs> Bards. <laughs> Go on. 11. 11. Six. Six. <laughs> she nods at you, nods at you, looks at you. Nah, you're part of the crew. You're cool. <laughs> you're cool, but she's going to be watching you. Cool. Do you guys want to make your way immediately? Do you want to do anything before you go? There's no rush. The storm is in the temple. <laughs> It's not going anywhere. Um, How far away is the temple? Oh, it's, it's um, she tells you that if you, if you walk out of the dock and continue up the hill, which goes up the spire, it's at the very top of the spire. Oh, so not far. No, not at all. An hour's walk, maybe. Uh, is, is everyone sufficiently healed from the yeah. damage that the battle did? Yeah, that's all okay. fine. And you see that look, the entire crew are now disembarking from the ship. Everyone is being chivied off so the ship can be dealt with. Um, one of the other priests is using a spell to start raising the ship out of the water. <laughs> like, they're not going to be able to dry dock it because it's like that's technology that's way advanced <laughs> for these people, but they are going to be able to do some significant things to make it better, fix it up, make it the ship it used to be. So, they're definitely helping out in that respect. Do you want to make your way up, up to the temple? Yep. Excellent. <coughs> As Elahan guides you up, up the path, she tells you a little bit about the Cat of Funel, which is the name of the temple. The land around is open to the sea coasts. Powerful winds blast in from all four compass points. Everything is made of flags, streamers, kites, vanes. Everything around you, much like a Tibetan village, has this sort of constant tingle and tangle of joints and movements as flags snap in the wind. This is clearly a huge part of their culture, and they are not fans of silence. <laughs> Around this temple, as you walk up, are these low, squat stone buildings that are clearly designed to weather the elements, <laughs> which they must get a huge amount of up here. But the temple itself in front of you is ginormous. It's at least eight stories high. It's um, gold filigree around it. It's not so much a solid gold block as stone with inworked gold the entire way up and around it, so it looks very rustic, but very, very beautiful and very, very wonderfully ornate and designed. Can I appraise the temple? You're absolutely allowed to appraise <laughs> the temple. Please, appraise the temple. <laughs> What's the appraise skill in 5th edition? <laughs> uh, there isn't one. There isn't one. It's probably insight. Give me insight. Give me insight. It is incalculably valuable. <laughs> You have to spend a lot of time like chipping gold out of stone <laughs> to get there, but yeah, it is incalculably valuable. Um, as you make your way forward and as you make your way into the town, you realize that there is a storm in town, but it's incredibly localized, like perfectly warm, sunny, lovely day. You take two steps forward. <laughs> You're inside this gigantic storm cloud that's covering the entire top of the temple. 
almost in a vortex. And uh, there's almost a line where you can see rain falling and rain not falling. Like it's a perfect cartoon cloud that totally surrounds the temple and some of the buildings around it. Elahan is um, taking her time and making small <laughs> symbols <laughs> to herself because clearly this is very important to her. Oh, once again, we fall into darkness. <clears throat> that's the storm, that's what that is. Um, and as you make your way forward, funnels start coming down out of the cloud and start hitting around you. A lightning bolt strikes very close to your feet. Like this, is a, this is a full-on storm effect. Anyone wearing armor is suddenly very cold and wet, and it's very, very <laughs> heavy. Right? It's, it, it's, it's suddenly become a rather awful... You're in plate as well. <laughs> 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 um, I'm going to take off the uh, metal armor. Oh, could I? Okay, yeah. are you sure? Well, I'm wearing plate in a lightning storm. <laughs> I have a okay. uh, um, canade, I don't know how you say it, the mandolin. Canade the mandolin that can cast protection from lightning. <laughs> so I wonder if I should cast that on Scarlet. I mean... You can do what you like. There's lightning storms happening all around you. I, I kind of, I, I reach a hand out and I just say quietly, would you like to be protected from the lightning? I would rather that than be protected. Okay. Um, and so very briefly, <laughs> <laughs> Rolora tries to think of something to sing. Um, Sorry, bards. <laughs> yeah. Bards. Scarlet, take care, be aware, but there's no to be scared you're protected now even inside this cloud and we'll get past this somehow awesome. that's protection from lightning how does protection from lightning work um i'm, I'm glad you asked <laughs> <laughs> um, i can I check as well yeah i think it's i think it might be just kind of advantage or something you possibly um, have no time but i'll probably look in there I think Thank it's just you. resistance, I think you're right. It might just be resistance. Sorry, I will check. In the meantime, you're making your way towards the temple. Do you guys want to... What do you want to do as you make your way towards the temple while I check this? <laughs> are, there, are there people around? No, no people at all. They've all been taken out because it's too dangerous. Ah. <laughs> um, if we're moving kind of out speed of Hashan, which I'm assuming is a little bit slower than... Hashan's not with you. Hashan, oh, stayed, right. Hashan and Mongweb have stayed down. It's just Elahan with oh, you. Elahan. Oh. Elahan um, walks the same speed you guys do. That's fine. I'm going to... Yeah, is there cover damage. and such like that you're I resistant to lightning damage okay. uh, you can jump from cover to cover between these buildings there are a couple of buildings before you get to the ground level of this temple which seems to be relatively open there are open doorways I'm going to try and disappear you're going to try and stealth jumping. go for it you're on me a stealth check uh, 26. what 26. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 1 to 20 dice and they have modifiers <laughs> One is appalling, 20 is like superhuman. You rolled a what now? 15. A 15 plus your modifier is? Plus 11. 11, 26. <laughs> you just fade from view. You've managed to hide yourself in a wind funnel. That's how good you are at this. God damn, level 12. Right, so the rogue has disappeared completely. I do do a quick uh, message, <laughs> uh, so, so a psychic message to Zach, uh, just going. Just follow us, okay? We don't need to see you. Follow us. You can, you can reply. You can reply. If you choose not. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Zach chooses not to respond. <laughs> Kat, what are you... What is... Oh, Scar what is Scarlet up to? Um, she is just following on up the hill. Just following up the hill. Um, I'm somewhat confused and concerned about our uh, sudden... Uh, Ascending to godhood, mm -hmm. of these people. I'm not overly happy about that. <laughs> you should know that Elahan is walking amongst you, and she is so happy. This is <laughs> a her element. She just loves it. B, she's surrounded by people who she thinks are gods, which is just awesome. C, someone just disappeared, proving that they're kind of godly, which is cool. Someone just played a song and calmed the storm a little bit for their friend. She couldn't be happier. Can like, I ask Elahan a question? She's literally just like -na -na, having a great time. <laughs> so good. I want to ask her a question. Go for it. Was there any particular event? Did anything happen to m make this unmanageable for you? No. It just happens from time to time, apparently. I've only been in this job for about ten years, so... It's, it's all relatively new to me. It's happened before. Hmm. <laughs> years ago, my mentor dealt with a similar problem, but he did not reach a level to tell me how before he vanished. 
And no one else would know. It's the job of the high priest of Kataruba, which is me. Ah. But should didn't read up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you don't always read up on things before they happen, do you? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, she's really giddy. Like she is in a good mood. She leads you on forward into the lowest level of the temple if you'd like to follow her. Sure. Yeah, cool. Make your way inside the temple. Uh, the, you can still hear the thunder and the rain, and it's very much a stormy, stormy, stormy weather. But um, it, you're not being hit by it in the same way. Lowest level is a very sort of community meeting place, common agora kind of setting. So there's storage, there's supplies, entrances are wide and high. The ceiling is relatively high, and there are wooden staircases and ladders around the edge to take you up further if you wanted to go higher up. There are various tunnels, apertures, often to the rock either side of you. Mm -hmm. And make perception checks. Ten. Ten. Sixteen. 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 Oh, never <laughs> 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 well, Scarlet, you start to realize that you can always see the sky. No matter where you stand in this room, looking around, the holes are so perfectly designed and arranged and maintained that if you look off in any given direction at any time, you can always see the sky at some point. Okay. This is an incredibly well-designed building for exactly what they want it to be. However, there is still a storm outside and it, th there is a definite rattle to the building. You can hear the wind vanes and the chimes going and there's a relative sort of tingling noise constantly as you go forward. Uh, please tell me what you'd like to do. Elahan is just walking into the room and making her way towards the stairs at the back. Is there any paraphernalia? Oh, loads, tons. You couldn't move for paraphernalia. <laughs> it's mostly farming equipment and supplies, but there is stuff. It's a very com community marketplace. It's been abandoned, basically. I was going to keep an eye out for anything of value that I might consider on the way out. On the way out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you continue looking around for things of value. Um, roll me a perception check, I think. Nat 20. <laughs> right. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a community market, so there are various sort of urns that you imagine are probably put aside for money for people to place valuables in and then take away at the end of the day, but because this place was abandoned relatively quickly, you get the sense um, there are things knocked over and so on. There's probably still some coinage and valuables of that kind left around the building, so... You could probably swipe a couple of those if you wanted to. Although these people are your friends and they treat you like a god. Yeah, we still need to be able to buy things later. <laughs> True acquisitions manager, you do. Right, so... <laughs> I'll take like a few coins here and there. Um, mm -hmm. If they're just laying around and been abandoned. Okay, you find about five gold pieces. The equivalent of. They're gold lumps. These guys don't really do coins. Um, as this happens, you with your high perception roll... You look around and you keep noticing this sort of, there's always a vi bit of sky visible through a sort of tunnel effect through the stone. You think you see a face in one of those holes as you look up. Um, I'll ask for Nunta to tell them all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and ask if she sees it too. Do you see the face of the Highlander? Do I need to... Oh, 22. You, yeah. There seems to be a face. In, it's not a human face, but there's definitely some kind of... It looks like a face in the clouds. Okay. I, I just kind of go... I definitely see some sort of face. Yes. Um, Do you I make any visible movements or changes? Um, what you're doing? No, I was, I was like, somewhat quietly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you tell Zach? Who you can't see. Yeah, we tell <laughs> Thing. <laughs> <laughs> just do it somewhere else. I'd like to just see if there's anything around us that looks magical, because I'm aware that I've fought like physical animals and people, mm -hmm. but I've not fought a weather pattern before. <laughs> <laughs> and so I want to see if there's anything in this market, abandoned marketplace, that looks magical and might be of assistance. There is not. And okay. as you have a look around for that, suddenly these, these windows that are more like sort of small tunnels through the rocks, suddenly these whirlpools start coming through and forming together and start forming a, a spire in the middle of the room. Elahan turns and sees us and goes, okay. 
and suddenly they form together and form these two very large storm clouds. Only way you can describe them, they are basically animate storm clouds floating in the middle of the room. Yes. What would everyone like to do? <laughs> I'm, ba- I'm kind of backing up against a wall just mm-hmm. to have as much distance between... Detritus is slowly starting to be <laughs> blasted aside as lightning bolts strike it. Um, the wind is picking up and the, everything that's not made of anything heavier than rock is starting to flutter and flap away. Um, because they were very keen on us not hurting mm-hmm. this thing, um, I'm going to back up a little as well. Okay. But, you know, have a nice defensive stance just in case. Okay. I'm going to sneak over to where Alohan is. Yeah. And basically just kind of yank on her sleeve. Yes. And go, which way's the library? <laughs> <laughs> She says, up, we must go up the stairs. But as she steps onto the stair, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> a lightning bolt crackles out of the um, one of these uh, storm creatures and slams into her. And she takes, thank you. She takes 16 points of lightning damage. <laughs> <laughs> as this lightning bolt crashes into her and knocks her off her feet and sends her smashing into the wall. She's not knocked unconscious, but she looks very, very annoyed. She looks at three of you and says, all right, maybe we have to fight this one. (laughs) (laughs) And we enter initiative. Can everyone give me your uh, dexterity scores, please? Uh, 15. 15? 10. 10. 18. 18. Zach, you go first. What would you like to do? I'm going to try and find the nearest table to hide under. You're still hidden at the moment. Oh, okay. So <laughs> you, still have, you still effectively are hidden. You still have the hide effect In on which you. case, I'm going to pull out my short bow and mm-hmm. attempt to shoot the uh, whatever it is. Well, there are two of them currently swelling around the middle of the room. So you want to try and shoot one with a magical short bow that you have. Yeah. Excellent. Make your attack roll. Twenty-seven. You absolutely hit it. Roll with a sneak attack damage as well. Thirty-two points of damage. Sorry, thirty-two. Uh, Thirty-six. Thirty-six points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> With a sudden whistle out of nowhere, an arrow comes zooming out and smashes into one of the elementals, and the whole thing sort of <laughs> rolls. It's not happy, but you can definitely attack this animate cloud. Okay. I'm then going to move and hide again. Where are you hiding? Uh, there's, are there pillars, or is it just like tables and things? There are tables, there are pillars holding up the roof. It's a very large building. So yes, there are plenty of things you could hide behind. I, I'm going to find a nice sturdy pillar to hide behind. <laughs> <laughs> Zach goes and finds a nice sturdy pillar. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so 21. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. At this point, you can basically hide whenever you want to. <laughs> so that's kind of what happens. Right. Um, one of the clouds moves forward and... Um, it sort of buffets you inside your armor. What's your armor class at the moment? 20. 20. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a 22 and a 28, so it hits you twice. Um, you take... What, 16 points of damage. Oh, sorry. You take 21 points of damage as uh, it buffets you, and also every time it hits you, there's a buffeting boom, and there's thunder rebounds inside your helmet and bounces around your head. Um, can everyone please roll me a constitution saving throw? Critical success. Mm-hmm. 17. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> right. There is a loud crack of thunder and a very loud bang as this thunder blast goes off right next to you, effectively. There's a flash of blinding light. You two are smart enough to quickly raise your hands and cover your eyes, and you are not affected by it. You are blinded and deafened until the end of your next turn. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, Rilora, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Um, is the song on my mandolin a bonus action? Or is yes. it a full one? Um, no, a song on your mandolin is an action. Yeah, it's an action. Oh, well. And also, I don't know if it will work because Zach won't be able to hear me. Um, <laughs> oh, that's so true. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll leave yeah. that for the moment. <laughs> Um, oh, hang on, you have protection from lightning. I do. Yeah, take back some hit points. Um, okay. Take back two hit points. Cool. Five of those are lightning, because three of those are lightning damage. Yep. Um, in that case, uh, as her action, mm -hmm. what are the kind of objects around? Are there any kind of, uh, just like, like big, aggressive, kind of bludgeoning-y style I mean, objects? there are various farmyard implements. Okay, um, I, I pick just a farmyard implement at random uh you have to tell me what it is i'm gonna say it's uh, it's just a big spade a big spade <laughs> Valora picks up a big spade but i'm picking it up with my telekinesis um because i'm keeping <laughs> i'm keeping distance as much distance as i possibly can yep. from this cloud mm -hmm. uh, and my action is to take the spade and just try to <laughs> Bludgeon the cloud, and also. Must be the player's handbook. I'm taking telekinesis. <laughs> what? I'm I know you can do it. It depends if you use the strength of the spell or your strength. Oh right, okay. Mm -hmm. You tell me what you want to do. I just uh, well, with my action, I want to take the spade and I want to bludgeon the cloud, and with my bonus action, I want to cast. Uh, can I cast spiritual weapon at the same time as telekinesis? It's only if one of them is concentration and one of them isn't, then I'm fine. Yeah, that's fine. Cool, then spiritual weapon as well, which just is another spade, but it's like kind of glowing <laughs> and ethereal. <laughs> and they just both come in. Because she's really, yeah. She just went for the nearest object she could see, basically. Okay. Uh, make two attack rolls, please. Cool, and these are both of my spell attack? Uh, they're or both of your they? spell attack, yeah. That's not going to hit. I rolled three both times, so they're both 11s. Nope, I'm a class of 14. Um, God damn it. A gi so a, a gigantic farming spade, so one for these two guys, so it's big and it's wide, goes lifting out of the air. What does your spiritual weapon look like? It looks like an ethereal version of the spade. And an ethereal <laughs> version of, Sam's, of self same spade. Reach in to try and <laughs> clap together and do some damage to this elemental, but <laughs> it seems to have gone around it. They're quite hard to see because they're basically clouds, so it's quite hard to yeah. work out where they are. Yeah. So you have clapped together in here and not done very much, and but it looked pretty cool. Any? <laughs> yeah, it just looks like I clapped. Um, any? Any movement I have is mm -hmm. to basically put as much distance from me in the cloud as possible, whilst keeping the items in range of those spells. Mm -hmm. No problem. So you duck, also duck behind a pillar, much like Zach has. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. It's Elahan's turn. She is. A bit frustrated. <laughs> she doesn't really want to hurt these things, but she also really doesn't want to have to deal with with this. She is going to try and cast Banishment on one of them, which succeeds at saving throw. She casts some magic and tries to um, get one of the Storm Elementals to be banished, to disappear, but it doesn't take any effect. Scarlet, it's your turn. Um, I would like to use one of my javelins mm -hmm. and throw it at the whichever elemental has already been damaged. Mm -hmm. A 16. That hits. Roll for damage. Uh, eight. Just eight. <laughs> <laughs> eight. Eight points of damage. You throw a javelin and it passes through it, but there's another movement. It's not. It's definitely been hurt by that, so that has taken effect. As that happens, the elementals, both of them, one wasn't attacking you, one had no reason to attack <laughs> you. Um, is, it now turns, they both look at each other, and suddenly these two smoky faces appear in them. They look at each other, then look out at you, and suddenly both scream at you. And as they scream, the faces sort of peel back. And you get this sort of like, it's like the whole anger and weight of the storm is just coming out at you, bellowing out of these two creatures as we end this hour <laughs> of Adventure as Wanted. I will pass back over to Kat to see us out. Thank you so much, guys.
Guys working on anything up here you want to pitch? No. No? no? Okay. Uh, as you know, I'm a freelance theatre PR. I work on a lot of stuff. Um, today I'm pitching a show called Not Lady Chatterley's Lover, which is Lady Chatterley's Lover. It's a comic retelling of Lady Chatterley's Lover. To give you a sense of how silly it is, they run through the fields naked by wearing skin suits with water balloons on them in appropriate <laughs> places, which then get popped as they rub together. It's ludicrous. It's great fun. It's on at 6.30 at Sweet Grass Market, which is the other end of Cowgate. So check it out. Lies, oh, Steph. Lies. <laughs> Skip out on the nonsense and see the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>